One of the best things on the Max is that they came out of the box pretty much ready to be used. But over the years of using macOS, I have learned about few options, which I like to change straight away. That's what I want to talk about in this video, about these, let's say, annoying options which are there set by default. Of course, there are many other customizations and small things I like to change every time. But let's leave it for another video. If you would like that video as well, leave me a comment below. But now, let's focus only on these few options. So the first thing you'll probably do on your Mac is that you open Safari, start downloading things, download some apps and other useful files. But by default, there is an option that whatever you download, it automatically opens. Honestly, it drives me insane. Imagine you are just downloading some movie or music on the background and it starts to scream straight away once it's downloaded. Or maybe you are working on something and all of these downloaded files are popping on the screen. Luckily, there is an easy way how to turn this off. So open the Safari menu on the top, head to the settings and here on the general tab, right down here uncheck this box, open save files. It was enabled by default so any file that Mac consider safe, like some movies, pictures, PDFs, whatever, they'll be automatically opened. I definitely like to untick this. So whatever I download now, they'll be waiting in the downloads folder for me and I can open it anytime I want. Another iconic feature on the Mac is the dock down here. That's something you will be using all the time. But there is also one option I like to turn off every single time. You can get to the options for the dock from system settings, but I think the fastest way is to just right click or control click this vertical line and you will get to the dock settings right away. The option I'm talking about is this, show recent applications in dock. With that, there will be a section to the right side of the dock which shows you which app you have recently used. That's good thanks to that I can quickly access apps again if I need to. But I just find it annoying and filling up the dock with apps which I might be using very rarely. Maybe I just needed them once. And now they are stuck on the dock. If there is an app I need often, then it's better to place it directly on the left side of the dock, not in recently open. Also while you are here, make sure this option is ticked on. It should be actually by default. The indicator is this small little black dot under an app and it shows me that the app is currently running on my Mac. It's helpful if you are just closing windows and not quitting the apps fully so you can easily find out what is currently running on the background. Now let's talk about notifications. I understand notifications are important, especially on an iPhone, about you receiving calls, messages, but on the Mac you don't need to have all of this information. I don't need to know that the software downloaded it on the background. I don't need to know about every single mail. So I tend to turn off most of these notifications. To do that, open system settings again and choose notifications. It has its own separate tab now. You can see there are loads of apps. Some of them are of course useful like FaceTime, Messages, Find My, maybe Calendar if you want to get notified about your scheduled meetings. But I definitely don't need notifications about new books or music. And other apps like Keynote or Microsoft apps, they can be turned off. Also, I mentioned the mail app. You don't really need to completely turn it off. You can leave the toggle on, just deliberate quietly in the control center. So here turn off previous by setting it to never show. Did you also notice that some items are randomly disappearing from your desktop and downloads? Well, they are not disappearing, they are just uploaded to iCloud. This is happening when you are running out of space and the Mac kinds of decides that you don't need this file and that file and just offload it to iCloud. I find it very annoying because I want to have a control of these files myself. It's on one hand nice that it's packing up everything so you know you're not losing anything. But on the other hand, I want to decide myself what I back up there and what I don't. 
so I would really recommend to turn off this option. You can again do it from the system settings and this time click on Apple ID. Now click on iCloud Drive in the list and select option button. The first thing here is exactly what we are looking for. Desktop and documents folder. So tick it off. Now let's talk a little bit more about Safari. Safari is a great browser, especially on the Mac. But sometimes it can be a little bit overcautious. Imagine you want to download something on your new Mac or on a website you have never visited before. Maybe you will go to Apple Online Academy website after this video and you want to download some cheat sheets, other materials. But if you have never visited that website before, you will get a message, like an alert message, if you want to allow downloads from this website. And you will get this message on every single website you visit. Luckily, we can also override it and allow downloads. So as usual, go to the settings, but not the system settings, but Safari settings. Here, choose the Websites tab and on the left, open Downloads. Here is the list of all the websites which you allowed to download from. But if you look down here on the bottom, you have a message when visiting other websites. You can set it to Allow and now it will let you download from every website you visit. You should be perfectly safe doing this. It will not allow websites to be automatically downloading something without you knowing about. You will not be getting any viruses or malware to your computer. It just skips the process of building up a collection of approved sites in this window here. I talked a lot about new Macs, but this is not only for new Mac users. I know that some of these options were following me for a long time before I figure out how to change them. Luckily for you, you can change it straight away, but there is one more thing you can change right now. And that is to start following Apple Online Academy channel. I will make sure to bring some new tips and tutorials in the future. So see you in the next video. And in the meantime, you can meet me in the comments below. I am always here to help you. Thanks for watching.